call tonight's meeting to order at seven o'clock p.m. right on the nose. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, Edith, would you like to take roll call? Sure. Thank you. Commissioners, Mary Jane Badaghi? Here. Joe Carlucci? Here. Susan Hayes? Here. Kelsey Lamb? Here. Mira Parikh? Here. Patty Powers? Here. Chairperson Janine Rubin Obram? Here. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Um, Jay, are there any amendments to tonight's agenda? No, Madam Chair, there are no amendments. Okay, great. Um, moving on to item one, approval of last month's minutes. Um, did everybody read the minutes and does anybody have any changes or any questions or comments? And if not, if somebody would like to make a motion to approve, that would be great. I'll move to approve the minutes. Thank you, Patty. I'll second. second. Thank you, Susan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, minutes are approved. Uh, before we open the meeting up to the public, we have some lovely guests this evening. We have Christine and Margaret Ann from CityServe. Hi, ladies. Thank you for being here. Um, Christine, take it away. <laughs> All right. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Good evening, commissioners. Thanks for having us this evening. I have given my little PowerPoint to Jay, and hopefully, are you going to share it, Jay, or you need yeah, to? Yeah, I just got it got buried. So here we go. Okay. But um, so I tried to put together just kind of a comprehensive of everything we do. Just, I think that was kind of the point of tonight, right? Is just to share a little bit more about us. Um, all right, Jay, so you can go to the first slide. Okay. Can you see my screen? I can. Okay. All right. Why we exist. <laughs> we exist to mobilize mercy in our cities. Um, and what that really means is just extending practical compassion. So you're going to see us in doing everything from just um, entering into someone's crisis, whether it's food, clothing, resourcing people, whatever we can do to mobilize mercy and extend that grace uh, to people in crisis in the Tri-Valley. Um, we primarily focus on Pleasanton, uh, Livermore, and Dublin. Okay, so what do we do? How do we do that? Um, we care, coordinate, and connect. So I'll take you through each one, ways that we care. Go ahead, we care. Um, our care model um, is what I'm gonna share with you tonight. This is, um, it used to be called case management or what kind of the cities, all three cities hired us to do is case management. I changed kind of the messaging of that a little bit because one, we're not clinical case managers. We're not here to manage or nobody's a case to us. So I wanted to change and bring in more of that caring piece. However, technically it's case management. Um, so we are managing, making sure people are moving forward. So if you want to go ahead, Jay, um, how we do this is one, um, our care coordination will, somebody will call, they'll call our connection team. They're gonna be in crisis. They're gonna do an initial assessment. Um, if it's something a little more comprehensive, they can't just make a referral to another agency or just a, a quick fix or a calm down, de-escalation, something like that. Um, they will be set up on a care session. And then that will be with one of our trained care coordinators, AKA case managers. They'll sit down with this person or a Zoom, um, but we try to do as much in person as possible through our pop-ups or um, now our new office. Um, and they'll get their story. It's really important to us that we get their story because everyone comes in in this panic crisis and there's always like 10 layers deeper of what's really going on. So, so they want to get the story and then out of that story, they'll create a care plan. <laughs> um, and I'll go into that one next. Um, and then create some goals, tasks, and action, actions for that person. So when they leave, they leave with a care plan, some action steps. And then we can follow up within a few days, make sure those connections were made. Do they need another care session? And then we, we collect the outcomes. So go to the next page. Um, and when they're meeting in this session, this is the types of things that they're wanting to hear in the story. 
where is their crisis? Is it, is it with their basic needs? Is it a financial crisis? Is it something vocational or educational? Is it something with their emotional health or their physical health? Is it something with community, maybe a family friction, a community friction, an isolation, they have no friends? Um, so our team's looking for what is really going on here. And then once they get all that information, then in each one of these pieces of the pie, we have vetted local resources that that's their lane. So if it's something that's not in our, we're not gonna do all this obviously. So if it's something with mental health or it needs counseling or needs addiction support, we're going to then make a direct referral to that agency or that organization or that group. And then that we'll put that in the care plan. But then what we're adding now is a level of vetting so that when uh, we make that referral and we follow up with them, did they make that connection? Because a lot of people can refer, but if they don't make the connection or if that other agency is not following up with them, it's gonna put them back in crisis. It's gonna be a dead end and we don't want that to happen. So if we start getting input that some of those connections are not being made and it's not the client, it's maybe that agency, then I can work with that agency's lead and say, hey, what's going on here? Um, this isn't working for us. You know, you're not getting back to our people, whatever. So we're just trying to minimize kind of that, that spinning the people out of control and helping them to really make those connections. So we think of it a little bit more holistically because um, that I think is long-term more sustainable. Okay, go to the next slide. Um, a couple stories just here locally. Um, one is for uh, during the pandemic, we worked very closely with six, a lot more than six, but really strategically with six unsheltered individuals that some were living in cars, um, just all, all over the place over um, Pleasanton. We worked with them in a scattered ground hotel um, and really did rounds, build relationships with them, make sure their health was better. Um, they were getting the vital documents needed because our goal was to make sure they can get into permanent housing, hopefully after the pandemic. Um, we made a referral over to Safer Ground. We stayed with those individuals, make, making sure they're meeting with their housing navigators. Um, and Margaret Ann and her team just did phenomenal. And then when um, Goodness Village opened up, those six people we then made a match to make and made referrals into Goodness Village. All six of them got into Goodness Village and our team worked for a month to do that transition. So it wasn't like, here you go, because we're about relationships. And so we wanted to make sure they were starting to gel with their team because they're so used to our team. So we made sure when we felt like, okay, now they're gelling, they're listening, they're not coming to us or anything anymore. They're stabilized there in their new you know, situation. So that was a real good success for, in a lot of collaboration. Um, another um, woman that we're working with, we just finished, was an elderly female in her 80s, didn't have running water, hot water for two years. Um, she called us and so we worked with a lot of other agencies to pay for a very high plumbing bill, got work done, got volunteers in there to move the furniture around and she took her first hot shower in two years. So that just happened. So that was kind of exciting. Uh -huh. um, it's amazing huh? in our area, there's someone without water and it's just amazing. Um, through the pandemic as a whole, um, in the whole Tri-Valley, we helped over 1,407 households um, and close to 10,000 client contacts in that time. And that's with care coordination. Um, so we have all those statistics there, a lot of single moms, uh, 520 single moms that we work with in the whole. So there's a funding uh, that really took place um, that we noticed. So um, the, our Pleasanton Rotary just gave us $2,000 to put towards, we're hoping to serve about 20 of those single moms um, to continue to help them. Um, but as far as for this grant period from July to now, we are currently um, working with 126 households, uh, 30 homeless and uh, 96 sheltered are in our current um, case or care coordination. Okay. Go on. Um, so coordinate is another value of ours. So we coordinate efforts with some just, we do a lot more than this, but I just want to highlight a few. One is with Open Heart Kitchen. Uh, we work a lot with Open Heart Kitchen and we were noticing and they were getting a lot of pressure as they were delivering during, during uh, street outreach food. People will be asking for vital documents. I need a license. I need a coat. And, and they felt that pressure, like we need to provide that. So instead of them coming over to kind of what we do, 
and stick with the food. That's what they do. We don't give the food. So we said, what if we partner? So we now went into partnership and we've done 20 um, H Street outreaches with them. I have one identified person on my staff that goes twice a week. And as they deliver meals out in the streets, our, our um, care coordinator goes around and offers that, re- that next level resourcing. Um, and they are building relationships with everybody out there. So um, that's been going on since May. Um, another thing is we work with the Pleasanton um, Homeless Liaison Officers. And I have a staff member that does ride-alongs every other Thursday. They've done 10 um, just since July. So what happens is they go around. Um, the PD will show us problem areas, problem people, um, complaints. Our team will assess that. If they can help on the spot, awesome. If they can't, we'll go back. We'll find the resources and then go back after that. So we're in real good communication. Um, and then regionally, we meet with uh, PD from all three cities, the homeless liaison officers. Um, and we talk about regional, like as a region, what is going on with homeless or their encampment cleanups, you know, so our team can be prepared and also prepare the people um, that, hey, your air is gonna be cleaned up. So what can we do to get you um, into another spot and get your stuff cleaned up? So that happens once a month. Um, we also are very heavily involved with Central um, De La Gale right now doing uh, rental assistance. Uh, just so you guys know, we have 560 applications from the Tri-Valley right now that my team's processing and 85 Pleasanton households have been approved through that. So we're coordinating a lot with them. Very big program, <laughs> very exhausting. Um, and then we held three community meetings. The, the uh, community meetings. Didn't, I didn't do as many as I could this year because we were just so darn busy. Um, but hopefully next year we'll do four quarterly. And this really brings in those frontline service workers, not just like the executive directors and managers, but really the people that are out on the streets or really working face to face with the clients. And we had over 91 frontline um, line service workers attend. So I think it's a good way for them to feel like they can have a voice, talk, you know, find out other resources learn about something they didn't know about or share, hey, there's a gap. Um, So there's been a lot of collaboration out of that. And then um, Margaret Ann attends like every meeting. Jay has so many meetings. Um, (laughs) He keeps her busy and they meet with a boat and backs and axis and they're always talking, how can we help people? So a lot of collaboration happens. Um, You guys, um, the city of Pleasanton really benefited from, um, we got some funding through Measure A. And that was to create a mental health assessment tool and to find unsheltered people to take those mental health assessments and then connect them to mental health resources. And by default, or not really, when we did the outreach in Pleasanton, we just continued to use that tool. Um, And Jay, if you go to the next slide, um, we've done over 66 mental health assessments and given out these flyers that have anything available in the Tri-Valley, a couple of them are outside the Tri-Valley. If people are in crisis, there's a suicide hotline, there's counseling, everything from I'm depressed to like, I have a family member is completely out of control. So we tried to vet um, very closely what's there. There's a ton of gaps. Um, So we need a lot of help in that area. Um, There's a lot of gaps in the Valley, but we did our best to do whatever we can. Um, And so we do continue to help in Pleasanton, give those assessments and give out this resource. Okay, go ahead. So connect. Ways that we're connecting and creating access for um, Pleasanton residents. One, we just started a new pop-up outside of the Pleasanton Library on Tuesdays from 930, 1130. Anyone can just drop by. They want to learn about resources in the um, in Pleasanton, they want to book a care session. So they have a one-on-one time, drop off paperwork, whatever they need. We wanted to be accessible. And then, um, but Pleasanton residents can also go to, um, Asbury United Methodist on Wednesdays or Cornerstone Fellowship. We meet with a lot of different groups there, um, on Fridays, mainly homeless for this one. Um, and so Pleasanton residents can access and just make appointments and show up. Um, We opened our new office at the Pleasanton Senior Center. Um, We've been there, I don't know, like almost a month. And right now it's by appointment only. We have a care coordinator of the day there and three um, emergency rental assistance um, application coordinators there as well. 
And we're still in Pleasanton office above Inklings. And that's mainly houses our connections team because there's no public access. So everyone that answers the phone and, and emails and gets back to people and really makes those frontline connections are, are housed there. And then I just found out our Livermore multi-center uh, service center offices are almost done. And Pleasanton heavily invested in that office as well. And that should be set to open hopefully early February. And that will be really our hub. Um, all services will be there, drop in. You don't need an appointment. You're in crisis, you know someone in crisis, you can bring them at any point there. And the goal really, there's three offices there. And the main hub, I really want really to be run by volunteers. So um, we're trying to train up and get people ready so that that frontline person will really um, be just a wonderful welcoming volunteer. Okay, let's go on. Um, another way we connect is we created and updated our website. We also have a resource directory that's always being updated and vetted. Um, so people could just go on there if they're in crisis or they have someone in crisis they wanna recommend. Okay, so all the technologies there. I'm um, gonna show this. Can you do this video, Jay? See. Ooh. Okay. I don't think. Oh. Yeah. Do you need me to give you access? Yes, I think. Or if I request access, you'll get an email. Okay. It's okay. Okay, Jay. I can just explain what it is. I had a cute little video for you guys, but. Let me it's see. Okay. We, I don't know if you want to go on and then if I, it says it's gonna send me an email. Um, oops. I don't see it in my email. It's okay. All right, all right, let's go on. And maybe hopefully it'll send me an email and it'll give me access, but that's what it says it's gonna try to do. All right. So, yeah, I don't know. It's not okay. Let's move on. So, anyhow, um, oh, what is that? Do you have it back on? Sorry, yeah. guys. Okay, go back one. Go back one. Yeah. So, you won't see the video, but I can send it to you guys later. Um, the video is really just sharing about our SOS platform. It's a new platform that we created as a virtual kind of community engagement platform to start building momentum for our volunteer network. And it's called Season of Serving, which is SOS. Uh, we launched on November 22nd. We've had over 82 volunteers already sign up to do local projects. Um, and this platform, if you go on our website um, later, and it, you can submit a local event, say somebody, anybody that is doing a local event, they're like, I want the public to know about it. They send it, we vet it, we publish. Um, it could be someone, I'm going to submit a project. I really need help at my preschool painting I need, or Shepherd's Gate, you know, did a few. People, are, all the different nonprofits are submitting things or uh, someone's going to do a drive. Um, they can submit that. Then there's someone, I need volunteers or somebody wants to volunteer. They can go on there and find all the ways to volunteer or they want to give and find different places they can give. Um, it's really just a portal for all of our, just, we wanted somebody to know how to get involved because people want to serve. They just don't know how to get connected. So this is our attempt at letting people know during the holidays, here's all the different ways you can be involved. Okay. So go to the next one. So that's kind of what it looks like. You'll see like a Ruka house. I think there's a couple of Pleasanton reef hangings and reef makings, the veterans hall they'll put and submit. And so all of those are, it's up to the community to submit it. We're not submitting it. So we're just saying, hey, if you want your thing published, you need volunteers, go ahead on there. And we do vet them, obviously, but um, we've let everybody go on there because they're not from like Alabama or something. So, yeah, so it's been really fun. About 80, I think we have over 20 projects and I think 82 volunteers and it's only been up for like a week. So I think it's going to gain a lot of momentum. Okay, next. So the goal for that was to start to build kind of this excitement around volunteering. Um, and I'm telling you guys, this is because there's only so much we can do. I can't just keep adding staff and have a mega 
you know, care coordination team. I don't think that's healthy. Um, I think it's healthier to have some people that are really professional, but then we're training care advocates and community members that when the person gets a little bit out of the crisis, they're a little more stabilized, those care advocates that we want to train can come alongside the care coordinators and then begin to build relationship and help and coach and mentor. And then we can move on to the next person. And that where I think we'll have the greatest impact. We can expand the work that we do. Um, so you're going to see that in the new year. Care, none of these programs are funded. So this is all hopeful. hopeful. Um, and then in summer, we have um, our internship program. We're hoping we can fund that again and bring four or five interns. And they always do special projects, street outreach, um, and really give a boost to our team and hopefully a volunteer coordinator. Um, and then um, build out our volunteer network over the next year. So that's kind of our where we started 13 years ago. And then we kind of got into all the care coordination and case management. And I want to kind of bring um, that back a little bit to complement the work that we do. So I think, oh, our team, just real quick to see who the faces of all the people doing the great work. Go ahead. Oh, um, we're really building our care values into this team um, so that they don't just do work and work like robots. Uh, we want them to be creative, innovative, industrious, curious, clever, and brave. We want them to be accountable. They, we believe that our actions will either build or level the mission. We want them to be reliable. We are consistent, loyal, devoted, and work with integrity and endearing. We are approachable, kind, hospitable, and genuine. So we're really taking those care values um, and implementing them to all of our staff members. So here's our staff. Nick does client services, kind of that front end. Margaret Ann's over all the care coordination, um, marketing, and Tony's our operations manager. He's the one with dots, all the eyes, and very organized. Okay, next. Um, our finance manager, communications. See that open position that I really want? Okay, go to the next one. Um, here's our care coordinators. Joe is really focused on uh, doing the ride alongs in Pleasanton. Uh, Deb is mainly unsheltered and then Norma and Annie are working with mainly the sheltered families. Okay, and these are, that's our whole intake. They answer all the phones. If you call, these are the people that are going to be welcoming you. Carla um, over at the far right, she's doing the pop-up on uh, Tuesdays at the library and Taylor um, is doing the with open heart kitchen going out twice in Pleasanton to with open heart kitchen. Okay, that's it. That's our team. All right. Any questions? I know it was a lot. Thank you so very much. Wow, you guys just constantly knocking it out of the park and doing so much good work in our community. Um, I I do ha have a question. Um, the 30 unsheltered residents in Pleasanton that you're, that you have on your case right now, do they, um, want to stay unsheltered? Do they have a want to, um, find a place to stay? I'm just curious. I'm going to let Margaret Ann answer that because she worked very closely with the team and she'll have a better answer than me. So I believe, um, I don't know if it's a desire to want to stay unsheltered. I think that a lot of the obstacles that are that are unsheltered individuals, especially the ones that are chronically homeless are facing is um, there's either an addiction issue or a mental health issue that's not diagnosed. And so you've got that as an obstacle. You might have, um, a, and, and furthermore, I believe that we have like, if you have a catastrophic loss of community, whether that's through something that happened, a death in the family or something like that, um, that plays a role in whether or not somebody is going to trust an individual to help them. And so I don't know if it's a di desire to stay unsheltered. I think that it's more so this is the way that they've been living mm -hmm. and it's the most comfortable for them right now, even though it's crisis, it, it's, it's, built around a crisis, right? Mm -hmm. So as we work with people, we have to really layer the, like pull the layers back to figure out what is their story? What are we gonna do to create the trust that they need so that they will walk forward through the obstacles that they're facing? And so that's a big, that's the big role um, that 
that like, especially with Pleasanton PD, our homeless liaison officers who are phenomenal, by the way, um, they really work with us. You know, they're on the phone just as much as we are trying to get services for people. And so we work very closely with them and nobody's story is the same. So mm -hmm. it's not a necessarily, I don't think it's a desire to stay unsheltered. I think that it's a I'm going to put my trust in somebody else to help me. And every time my trust, every time something happens and I don't get to move forward or I'm let down by a service that doesn't do what they say that they're going to do, or there's an obstacle that I don't know how to cope with or face, all of those things play a role in whether or not they move forward. Thank you very much. Um, commissioners, any uh, questions? I, I do, Janine, if I may. Um, Christine, I, I was trying to jot it down, so I may have gotten it wrong, but the, the, the volunteer section, did, did you say it's November to January? It, that uh, The uh, season of serving? Right. Yeah, I just extended it today to the end of February because every month we do, I mean, every year we do Compassion Month in February. I'm like, oh, we should just add another month. <laughs> so, and then we're hoping to launch another season of serving for the summer months too. And then eventually it'll be all year long. That Well, that 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 was where I was going yeah. because- I don't have a volunteer say, coordinator because I already have uh, eight uh, volunteers and you, there's, so I'm doing it right now. Okay. And I'm telling you, I'm up all night. I, I went away for um, Thanksgiving for two days. I came back to like 82 people signing up. I'm like, oh, wow. you know, I'm like, you know, so I haven't got back to everyone yet. So as I'm hoping to get an intern in the summer that will, the goal will be to build a volunteer committee. And then that committee can kind of run it. And then if we need staff, we need staff. If not, that volunteer committee can be over youth or seniors getting involved, you know, and have different community groups, faith groups, whatever. And they're right. all busy doing work. I, I wondered I wondered if it was just a capacity it's your capacity, capacity issue because people are always looking to do things. Oh so, it, it's not a matter there's a lot of people it's just a matter of following up and making sure they because you want to connect them but you want them to connect somewhere where they're going to have a meaningful connection right. and continue to serve. And not just check, oh, I did that. You right. know, they want to stay at Shepherd's Gate. They want to stay at Tri Valley Haven. They want to continue to serve in those areas. And so it takes a lot of coordination. So so what is the criteria for that, for that position? Because I, I always, I, I work at the hospital and I always get people that, you know, kids that want to volunteer to get, mm -hmm. to get ready for college oh, for or they're in too. college. And like, how much of a commitment are you looking for? And how long? <laughs> and, 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 okay. I'll tell you, I think I think if we could have some even twelve to fifteen hours a week. Okay. I think just doing that. Okay, and and, and like compute and computer skills. Or yeah, definitely, computers. definitely computer skills. Because I have right. a great volunteer helping me lead. We're doing this a big event. I forgot to tell you guys about. It's a free market, but like a flea market, but for the holidays for families in need. And she's my volunteer and she's phenomenal relationally. She's connecting with everyone, else, but she cannot do anything on the computer. <laughs> and I, can like, relate, I can relate to that. So. I know. And so I'm like, bless your heart. And we're going to give her a spot in our office next week. Cause she's like, I don't even have a computer. I'm like, Ooh, you know, with these times and with young generations engaging them, you've got, you know, QR codes, all this stuff, push yeah. notification. You have to have that. So, so it could be a little, an intern maybe that's, more relational because we want that too and then project management skills probably great i'll keep my eyes open yeah please let me know great anybody else yeah i was curious to know since it's a fairly new recent development how the goodness village thing is working uh, and how long do you expect the five people that went there you know to be there and what will well, it's supposed to be What's forever. The plan for them? Forever. Well, as long as they keep getting funding and they do a good job with development, um, and I'm very close <laughs> to him. We meet a lot. We're actually going to dinner with our husbands next week. Um, my concern is they don't have anyone doing development. See, they had a CEO and she was program manager, and CEO left. And I know how much I have to do for development. Mm -hmm. And Margaret Ann's kind of like what she is, you know, so my concern for her, I'm like, you got to get someone that's their focus on that because the first three years <laughs> is funded. 
but mm -hmm. it's the next sustainability. So of course we mm -hmm. will do whatever we can to push people her way because we want our people to stay there. Mm -hmm. But if the goal is that they, they grow old and that's their home. I, I'd like to add to that. Um, it's been really great working with their staff, um, just kind of like passing the torch um, to help build those relationships so that they have a good relationship with those individuals that are living there. And just, um, you know, we provided just from our staff that had worked with individuals and we helped people in Livermore, Pleasanton and Dublin get into that program. So we provided, um, them with a bio all about the person, the, the um, obstacles that we had walked through with that person, just so that they would understand what that person had already experienced. And then from there, you know, we're still available. Like I, I still get from time to time, get text messages from the case managers. Hey, you know, this happened. I don't know what to do. What would you suggest? And so um, there have been a few times when I've been like, well, let's, let's all sit down. Like if it's a really major issue, I'll be like, well, let's all sit down and have a, a cup of coffee together, you know, and I'll, you know, go out there and take some Starbucks and just sit down with the, the case manager and, um, the, the, the individual. And so that we can work through something because sometimes they've built trust with me and they'll tell me something that, that it took them a year to tell me, mm -hmm. and they've only known that person for six months. Mm -hmm. So um, but I will say over the last like two or three months, um, after everybody moved in, it's been exciting to watch because now when I go and visit, um, or drop something off, I see those individuals thriving. I just was recently over there. Well, I guess about a month ago, I met with Kim and I did a tour and I met some of the folks living there and it's, it's a wonderful program. And I think one of the things that I'm really impressed with is, how flexible Kim has been with developing programs and allowing them to engage in the program development themselves, because they know to, you know, Christine's point earlier about, you know, the mental health needs and all that, they know what they need. They know what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they have their basic structure, but within that structure, Kim's giving them, you know, this empowering opportunity mm -hmm. to create programs and, mm -hmm create schedules for themselves and really exciting, Mary Jean. If you want to go out there, just call. I know they'd love to have you out. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments or questions? No. Can I ask you guys a question? Of course. Um, are there any problem areas or um, gap areas that you guys feel like you're getting calls or people like, oh, that, you know, that we can address or create a program for or something? Because I'm in the mode of 2022, like envisioning. Right. So if there's anything that we can step and do to help. Um, I think the local coordination that you're doing is really critical. Because remember, you know, just a, two years ago, three years ago, 2 on one was taking all that and you two started coordinating together um, to make sure that when people do need something, they don't have to go to San Leandro to be housed, that they're, you know, you've got, an, we have a coordinating service here now in you um, that can help take care of our residents. And so just, you know, I, I think that's wonderful. And, and I think that if you stop doing that, that would be a gap. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. We'll see. Definitely keep it, we'll do. That's I think it's important. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys, I mean, seriously, kudos to you. You're just doing an incredible job. Oh, and the presentation was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for all your support and funding. It's made us uh, able to do all this. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. okay. The only thing, Christine, I, I just wish you were a little more energetic. That's oh. Yeah. <laughs> Seen me 20, I've been doing this 25 years. You should see me. I feel so slow, and everyone's like, "Got injured." I'm like, "Oh, you should have seen me." <laughs> very nice to see you guys. Oh, you as well, both of thank you as well. You thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Margaret. Take care. Bye. Um, okay, it's time to uh, open up the meeting to the public. Aaron, do we have any? comment cards or anybody that wants to speak?
Uh, no speaker cards and no hands raised. Okay, thank you. Then I will close pub public comment and move to matters before the commission. Um, item four, selection of a commission chair and vice chair for 2022. Jay, do you have a report? Yes, it's it's going to be even briefer than the actual report itself. Uh, we need to appoint, this is the December meeting that we appoint a chair and a vice chair for the upcoming year. And so what I would suggest for the commission is to take two separate motions. First vote on the chair for the calendar year 2022. And then after that's done, um, take nominations for vice chair and then vote on the vice chair separately. So with that, I think I'll turn it back to you, Janine, and, and tee it up for um, nominations from the floor for a chair. Thank you, Jay. Uh, usually I ask for motions from all of you, um, but as chair, can I make a motion? Jay? Yes, yeah. Okay. I would like to motion uh, Joe Carlucci for chair for 2022. Do you need a second? Mm -hmm. That would be me, I'll second. Thank you, Patty. Do we have any more? Um, do we just vote on that or should I ask for another? We should ask for discussion. Discussion, commissioners, discussion um, before voting, please. I, I was just going to, if I'll be happy to do that if, if elected, but I wanted to ask because Jay, will we be getting back together soon? Do you think, or? I hope so. Um, okay. We haven't heard anything um, that is super encouraging for us right. getting back in person. Again, like I said, I think at the last meeting, since we are a larger commission, more than just five, um, we won't be one of the first ones rushed back. You know, council and the Park and Recreation Commission, Planning Commission, those ones that have five members will be the first to go back. At least that was the plan a month or so ago. So still no word on when exactly we would go back or try to go back. Okay, my, my point being like Janine, if you felt like you were cheated because you had to do it online versus live, um, I, 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 would, I would nominate you then if you wanted to do it, so. So I could sit up there and pretend like I'm the mayor. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I'm good, though. Thank you very okay. much. I'm happy to pass the torch. Okay. Can I just ask, and this is a digression, but why is our committee different or our commission larger than the others? You know, I, without looking at the municipal code, why it was selected as nine members instead of five members probably just larger representation. I don't know. Susan, as one of the historians of the commission, do you have any? That's such a nice way of saying one of the older. <laughs> I was thinking, just think that is really well done. Well done, Jen. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. It was nine when I was on originally um, and there was no questioning it. Um, I think you make a good point about representation though, but I have no idea. I'll look into that and I'll, I'll just, follow It up. actually yeah. precedes me. It actually precedes me. Yeah, it, it's been old. nine for, for a long time. Okay, I was just curious. I don't... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Edith, do you, do you have any knowledge? I mean... I, I don't know why, but it's been nine on the Human Services Commission for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. They didn't get to where he got without being diplomatic. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's true. You know, may, perhaps because we we you know read all the grants and um, divvy out quite a bit of funds, maybe they just wanted more eyes on those grants than just five or ten eyes. I guess I could say, yeah, more than, more than ten eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or maybe I would just guess too. Maybe it has to do with I think part of our role was not only to to take input, but also to evangelize somewhat the needs in our community. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we have a diverse commission and more of them, that a goal is accomplished easier. I'll have to do a little digging and get back to the commission as to find just out why. <laughs> Good yeah. question. 
Um, any other discussion before we vote? Okay. Um, all in favor of Joe Carlucci being uh, king, I mean, uh, chair. <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> I Any appreciate opposed? your support. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I didn't, just a question. I didn't see a hand from Mira. Yes, I. Okay, thank you. And I'll uh, take uh, any motions for um, a nominee for vice chair. So, so how does that work? Then we go, who hasn't done it yet? <laughs> and I think Patty's next in line. I nominate Patty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Any discussion, questions? Um, Jay, excuse me, Jay, yes. who is the alternate? We don't have an alternate now. There is no alternate? That's, that's correct. Because okay. both uh, um, Mike and Harsh are no longer on the commission. So oh, there's, no, there's no alternate. Any other nominations for vice chair or discussions or questions? Or a second? I second. Okay, all in favor. Well, Patty. Um, <laughs> any discussion? Any discussion, Patty, before <laughs> we vote? It would be my pleasure, thank you. Okay. All in favor of Ms. Patty Powers being vice chair, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Thank you. It's okay. a landslide. <laughs> it's a land, yes. You know. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Joe and Patty. Really appreciate it. We appreciate you guys stepping up. I hope I can serve as well as you, Janine. Oh, thank you, Joe. I, that won't be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, moving on to item five, select commission representatives for various subcommittees. Jay, is there a staff report? Uh, yes, a very brief one. Um, this is an item that pre-pandemic um, was at the bottom of our monthly agendas, and it had various um, subcommittees or groups um, that commissioners were assigned to, and we'd go through pretty much on an annual basis to reconfirm if the commissioner wanted to continue on that committee or if that commissioner turned out, then we replace that uh, commissioner on this particular task force or um, subcommittee. Um, and so that's what, what I'd like to do is hopefully in anticipation of meeting back in person um, and also having these subcommittee meetings continuing to meet um, I'd like to reestablish that practice, if you will, and it would start with three, the three bulleted um, task forces or alliances or um, organizations, if you will, um, that are on the agenda report. So the first one is the Pleasanton Rides Task Force. That is a meeting that typically is hosted at the Pleasanton Senior Center, um, and it's a, usually a quarterly meeting, happens on Mondays at like 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, and it's usually the fourth, third or fourth Monday every four months. Um, for they've been on Zoom for a while, they'll hopefully one day transition back to in person at the senior center. Um, the second uh, meeting is Tri Valley Nonprofit Alliance. And Susan, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe their meetings are or will continue to be or will start back up their monthly on the second Thursday at 1030 in the morning and they're meeting by uh, via zoom right now. Right. Um, and then the last group is what you just heard from city serve of the tri valley. I think Patty and Joe had served on those that uh, meeting that Christine talked about just not that long ago. Um, she said they did three last year. They like to do four every year, and it usually rotates between the three Tri Valley cities where the location is. Um, and it's just a really it's an opportunity to connect um, a variety of nonprofits in the Tri Valley, faith based organizations, and just find out really what's going on with um, care and you know programs in the Tri Valley um, four times a year. So. Those are the three um, organizations, I'll call it, if you will, 
um, that we're looking for commissioners to um, participate in and commit to. Um, I think what we've done in the past was um, had a primary commissioner and then an alternate in case the primary couldn't make it to that particular meeting. Um, so before I end, I will turn it over to Susan because I know she's like, you're a board member of Tri-Valley. I am uh, a board member of Tri-Valley Nonprofit Alliance, but it, is that a conflict of interest? Because I would be at that meeting anyway. I mean. So no, it's 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 not a conflict of interest as long as we oh, don't okay. have a, a majority of the commission attend the meetings. And if we had one right. or even two, you know, if the alternate wanted to go to that meeting too, we'd still only have three and that's not a quorum of yeah. the commission. So Okay, yeah, no. So um, I'd be happy to take that one on um, and and knowing that I'll I term out I think in April April I think so. could be my swan song <laughs> Susan could you, could you talk a little bit about the Tri Valley Nonprofit Alliance I, I'm not that I'm going to go to the the event next week, but I'm not that familiar with them. So they are the regional convener for nonprofits in the Tri-Valley. Uh, they started eight years ago, Moni Knopp and the current CEO, Kathy Young, um, put together a group of folks um, and I was part of that. And we came up with the concept for putting it together, what it was going to involve, um, invited as many people who, as many nonprofit folks who wanted to come as they could. And we did um, small focus groups, like all in the same room, like in, in, and we met by industry that we were in at the time, um, or I guess section of human services that we served um, and, and came up with the original concept. Um, and it's been going strong. I mean, at this point, it's um, it provides educational opportunities, um, mentoring opportunities. Um, there's a lot of excitement around the um, resource center that um, they're going to, we're going to, I just came on in, June, in July, so I'm not used to saying we yet, um, but uh, there's going to be a regional center um, which will have offices that will be co-working spaces for nonprofits. Um, so there are, there's a lot of wonderful things they're doing. Started the Tri-Valley Nonprofit Fund during COVID um, to support the six safety net service providers that were um, shouldering a lot of the requests for basic services um, and the growing services um, and raised $183,000 during that year. Um, for those, and those were unrestricted funds. So it went to helping them scale their operations to meet the growing needs because they couldn't hold their fundraisers anymore. And that's where they would normally get their um, operational budget because very few grants will give out unrestricted funding. Um, so, you know, we found a gap there and, and met that. Um, so it's, um, and in fact, yeah, the event that's coming up is a recognition event, um, the inaugural recognition event, which is next Tuesday at the Bankhead in the evening, and it's free. You do have to register, but um, they're going to um, recognize the six nonprofits um, that the safety net uh, service providers that were the beneficiaries of the fund. Um, the major donors, the corporate donors, you know, Workday, um, a lot of others uh, that I can't even think of right now, will also be recognized. Um, and then people who, key volunteers and donors of the, um, of the members of the Nonprofit Alliance. Um, you know, it's a great networking. It's like a chamber of commerce for the region. Uh -huh. The thing that's so important about it is that, you know, our region is part um, part Contra Costa and part Alameda County. And because of that, we, the, a lot of gaps happen with regard to state funding, right? Um, for these organizations, because the organizations serve the entire Tri-Valley. And so this way, this is a place where the entire Tri-Valley can, can convene and, and receive assistance and support as they grow and, and continue to serve. 
So does thank you. That help? <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you. Um, Jay, I'm happy to I, and interested in doing the um, the Pleasanton Rides Task Force. And 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 Jay, you were you were correct about Patty and I. I will say though, and, and I don't know if you recall, uh, and maybe I should have. Well, it wouldn't have been appropriate to ask Christine now. They were like doing it. They were scheduling their meetings like at the last minute, and and I was trying to. So essentially, Patty went to them all because, like, I can't necessarily clear Thursday at ten thirty the Tuesday yeah. before. <laughs> so yeah. so if if I would I I would love to, you know, be exposed more to that. That that would be my one caveat. I don't want to say I'll do it and then. Patty's got to do them all or whoever the other person is. So, so Joe, having said that, that I really got a lot out of those meetings. And so if you want to be the point person, I'd be happy to be your backup again, even if it means I attend more because I found those meetings fascinating and heartfelt and just a bit. great use of time. So, um, so if you want to put you down and me as your backup, I'd be happy to. Okay. And then maybe we can nudge Christine to give a little, more heads up <laughs> as to the date. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a bit, they, as you probably know, they used to be scheduled at the same time every month. Yeah. But I think because of the shortage of manpower and so many other things, it just got switched around. So, yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. So, just, I mean, there, so I have Janine for Pleasanton Rides, no alternate, Susan. For Tri-Valley Nonprofit Alliance, no alternate, and Joe uh, as the main person, and Patty as the alternate for City Serve of the Tri-Valley. Some of you haven't spoken, so I just want to. So I'm I'm available um, to be an alternate for Susan. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks, Mira. Do you know for the rides task force is afternoon going to be after school hours? I just have that restriction until about. 3.34. So typically they're at 1.30. So okay. unless, <laughs> unless, unless you get out of early dismissal on Monday, which yeah. I don't think is. Fortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you write her a note, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> Can you, would you mind giving just a, a thumbnail sketch of the Pleasanton Rides Task Force and why that's on our list? Um, because it's the senior transportation, basically, oh. um, okay. and that's and so um, it used to be based out of the senior center. Now it's contracted by Black Tie. Um, there is oh, okay. representation at that meeting is Amador uh, or Lafta, um, the Livermore Amador Valley Transit Trans Transit Authority. Yes, and mm -hmm. then Krill, which is Community Resources for Independent Living. Um, senior support program of the Tri Valley has a seat at the table too because they run the VAST program, volunteers assisting in senior transportation. Um, and so it's the Tri Valley focused um, senior transportation agencies, if you will, um, that get together and talk about gaps and services and how, how can we improve Pleasanton rides um and and how can we work better with LAFTA? How can we work better with uh, um, the vast program and Krill as well? So um, it's actually a pretty good pretty good meeting. Um, and it usually lasts about an hour, uh, 1 30 to 2 30 on Mondays. Jay, are all those acronyms going to be on the test? That was a <laughs> lot of acronyms back to back. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but it'll be a multiple guess at the end. So okay, <laughs> All right, so um, we can leave it for now with just Janine as the task force. Um, and then, uh, like I said, Susan and Mary and for Tri Valley Nonprofit Alliance and Joe and Patty for City Serve of the Tri Valley. Yeah, and I, I usually attend the City Serve one. So if you guys need a, a third 
back up and I could be it. Okay, thank you. Right. Okay. I don't need a motion for that. I don't know if there's any public comment out there, Aaron. I don't know. No, no public comment. Okay. Um, well, does anybody, uh, let's see, future agenda topics or should we adjourn, Jay? No, I have I have staff comments that I want oh, to- Oh, staff just, comments, yes. I want, I want to screen share something real quick. Okay. If I can. Um, uh, staff comments, you can all see this, right? Yes. Yeah, on the screen. Okay, so just real brief. So since we are not meeting in January, since it's right after the first of the year, our next meeting is gonna be February, um, February 2nd. Um, and um, so there's gonna be a lot of work that happens between now and then. Just for the commission's information, um, this morning, very early this morning, um, the applications for the 2022-2023 Zoom grant application um, opened up. Um, earlier today, I sent out an email to um, the um, organizations that applied for grants the last couple of years. So we should be covered on that. And the email basically informed the organizations when our virtual grant application workshop is going to be. Line two on this sheet, it's uh, going to be via Zoom again. It's Thursday, December 9th, and it's 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And that's the Zoom meeting that the three cities get together. We talk about our housing and human services grants programs, each of the cities. And we also talk about the community um, or the uh, community grants, the youth um, commission grants and the civic arts commission grants as well. Um, so basically the applicants have from today until January 19th to fill out their Zoom grant applications. We typically get about 25 to 30 applications and the Human Services Commission usually um, grades, if you will, or rates 20 to 23 because some of them go directly to the Housing Commission. Um, we will um, have our long meeting on Wednesday, March 2nd. Um, and then the Housing Commission will meet shortly after that. And then the target goal is to take this agenda item with the Human Services Commission recommendation, Housing Commission recommendation, Youth Commission and Civic Arts Commission to the April 19th council meeting. Sometimes that gets bumped to um, the first meeting in May, but our target is April 19th. Um, I mentioned this all to tell the commissioners that your homework is really going to begin uh, around January 20th. What I typically do is just before the grant application deadline closes, I send out an email to the commissioners saying, okay, your window for evaluation or grade, <laughs> if you will, is going to be January 19th to February 6th. I think February 6th is a Sunday. Um, this next year. So it gives commissioners about two and a half weeks to independently evaluate each of the 20 plus applications that are gonna be done electronically via Zoom grants. And I think MJ, I can work with you if you haven't used Zoom grants before. Um, there's a tutorial that we send out um, as well, um, but uh, we can get you up to speed on that pretty quick, I think. Um, so um, what else do I wanna say on that? Um, and so then the reason we um, tell the commission, the Human Services Commission, February 6th, is that the, myself and the housing manager with Pleasanton need to get together and sort through our grant applications. And we also need to meet with Dublin and Livermore staff. And the purpose of that meeting is to figure out from the regional perspective, are we, are we selling any organization short? How can we make sure that most are covered? Livermore, why are you doing this? And Dublin, why are you doing that? Pleasant, why are you doing this? So we can just kind of coordinate from a regional perspective, the grants program, if you will, since we work together um, on this so much anyway. So that's why we need like from February 7th for you know the next couple of weeks to kind of sort through stuff, then to get together to put the, a packet out for the Human Services Commission for the March to um, commission meeting. 
So that's kind of it in a nutshell. All that to tell you that your homework is going to start January 20th and your homework will cut off on February 6th. You will still be able to go back and review the applications after February 6th, but we will close it and lock it for any changes that commissioners need to make. So budget your time, I guess is what I'm saying. So any questions or comments on that? Are there any major changes in the approach to the, um, like the questions in the application this year? No, there, there are not, not from our end. So pretty similar to last year as well. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from staff or commissioners before we adjourn? Susan. Yes. I had one. I wanted to um, just share a little bit more about the power of giving event on um, this coming Tuesday. And I really hope a lot of you can come. I'm Jay, thank you, or Joe, thank you. I know you're going to be there. I don't know, Jay, if you can come. I'm going to be there. Oh, super, Ma'am Jay. Mm -hmm. um, Jay was really instrumental. One of, you know, we, we met with the three um, cities, the human service uh, staff folks, and, and Jay was just so critical, uh, and Becky, to getting the Tri-Valley Nonprofit Fund started. And one of the things we're going to announce, um, it's, I can't say anything about it specifically, but we have an exciting expansion of the fund uh, going forward. So that's the part of the evening, but it's going to have music. David Victor of um, Harmony and Healing um, and uh, formerly of Boston <laughs> uh, will be performing uh, the opening. And then um, we have a student pianist who had a Zoom concert and raised money for the fund during um, during the pan during lockdown. And he's going to be there performing too. So that's going to be kind of cool. And then a lot of uplifting stories and um, it's just going to be a really nice evening. So I hope you all will go online to tvnpa.org and, um, and register. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, I just have a, a question, just if, if you could remind me. Um, when the first meeting I went to, we talked about the overall strategic planning process. And I, I don't recall what the time frame was discussed for that. When will that be happening? Strategic planning process for. Well, the, I thought that there was a process that was a plan that was going to be uh, developed like every three years in conjunction with the cities in the Tri Valley. So we're working on the uh, uh, RFP for the needs assessment to update the needs assessment based mm -hmm. on the 2020 census information. So right. the three, three cities right now are trying to finalize a RFP. Okay. And that will, the result of that will be hiring a consultant to update the 2011 plan um, to a more current plan and hopefully, um, you know, position us in, in a better, better way for the next 10 years going forward with an updated plan. Okay. Any final comments or questions before we adjourn? Okay, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Joe. Second. Second. Thank you, Susan. Second. All, in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, adjourned at 8.04 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Well, thank you for See you, well. See you in February. Thank you, Janine. Okay. Thank you. See you in February. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.